If you don't live in a cave and have watched some YouTube videos lately, you've probably seen this. But first, a word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Check out Skillshare. I'll tell you about Skillshare. None other than Skillshare. I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Sponsor, which is Skillshare. Love sponsors like Skillshare. Skillshare. Brought to you by Skillshare. By Skillshare. By Skillshare. By Skillshare. By Skillshare. 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 As a big YouTube fan myself, I, I actually gave up and decided to give Skillshare a try and signed up for the two month free trial to see you know what what the fuss is all about. Currently I'm trying to improve my editing and filming skills here on YouTube and I mean it was a perfect timing to actually sign up for Skillshare and see if I can learn something there. You probably already know what Skillshare is if you clicked on this video so I'm not gonna borrow you with any details and let's jump in straight into the review and answer one of the main questions is Skillshare actually worth paying for? So to give you some context, what I did on that platform, I signed up on Skillshare on October 13th. Now it's the beginning of December, so it's been almost two months and my trial should expire in the next couple of days. During those two months, I tried 17 different classes out of which 10 I actually fully completed. I mainly focused on five different areas that I'm personally interested in, which was YouTube, uh, filming, video editing, investing, and productivity. So my review is actually mainly going to be based at least in terms of classes from these five different categories. Anything else I actually didn't look up. So, you know, there may be all hover world out there in Skillshare, but I only checked out these five categories. Okay, we got all the details out of the way. Now let's jump into the review. And the review is actually broken down into three different categories. It's the quality of, uh, classes is availability of those classes and other miscellaneous stuff. So let's start and cover quality first. The biggest differentiator in terms of quality is actually the teacher itself. You see, anyone actually can become a Skillshare teacher if they sign up. I don't think there is a really difficult process there, which means their filming equipment, their ability to script the videos, to film the videos, to edit the video, like, Everything depends on one person, which means you can go from really low quality classes to really high quality classes. And you know, that creates some kind of a discrepancy. I think Skillshare should have a more stricter guidelines of who can become a teacher on their platform. Because from my own experience, the quality of classes varied a lot from really good to meh to kind of bad, I would say. There were some classes which were like 15 minute videos about, well, it was basically like a YouTube video uploaded on Skillshare platform. It, 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 this is how it felt. So I don't think this should be considered a class. It was more like a YouTube video with the topic, what does it feel like to be a YouTuber or stuff like that. Um, you know, the quality definitely varied a lot from one teacher to another. I already mentioned that some of the courses or classes there are very short. I don't have anything against short classes and I do believe there is a market for, you know, um, learning something in like one or one and a half hours or even like 30 minutes. But from the videos that I watched from the classes that I took, it wasn't a lot of those, but they did feel a little, well, empty, so to speak. So. You have to be really careful when choosing a class. Second point is availability of classes. And actually, I don't think there is enough of them, at least from the categories I was interested in. You actually run out of good classes very soon. You basically, there are like two, three, maybe five at max really good classes on that particular topic. And the rest is, well, I don't know, average, at least by the looks of it. So when you sign up for Skillshare and for something that you actually pay monthly for, you would expect to have something new coming up every month or something along those lines. But Skillshare does feel empty and you run out of things to that you actually want to learn or, you know, the engaging teachers really quickly. And again, I don't at least Personally, I don't see that skill that uh, the type of person that signs up for Skillshare goes to every single category and learns, you know, 
everything. You probably, when you sign up for Skillshare, you probably already have some interest. You're interested in investing. You're interested in uh, video editing. You're interested in, I don't know, graphic design. So you choose that specific category. When you choose that category, it does feel very empty, which, you know, as an experience for a user, it's quite bad. You want to have enough content there to keep me engaged, you know, to be able to buy that yearly subscription. Otherwise it's, you know, after a couple of months, I had the subscription, uh, well, free trial for two months. And to be honest, I'm, I basically ran out of things to learn there. I already sort of started going to other categories to see maybe I can get one or more two courses in. But generally speaking, I'm not that engaged anymore. I kind of completed all I want to complete. However, I don't want to bash Skillshare. It's not all bad or something like that. For example, I think Skillshare is amazing for creative people. There are not a lot of really uh, professional courses, you know, 100 hours, 50 hours, 30 hours. It's more um, simple skills well, it's called Skillshare after all, but skill, simple skills that you want to learn and then apply somewhere. And there are a lot of skills for creative people. Anything with creativity, art, video editing, songwriting, script writing, writing in general, it's really there. So I think for those type of people, there is a lot to choose from. However, not having anything professional or professional courses, which give you like a certificate at the end, you need to spend like 30, 40 hours learning that, you know, uh, yes, Skillshare doesn't have that, but I don't think that's, you know, neither or, or advantage or disadvantage for the platform. It just caters to different types of people. So if you're something, if you're someone who's looking to learn a really quick skill in one or two hours, and you want to start applying that really fast, Skillshare is basically for you. If you're a creative person and you want to learn something quickly, Skillshare is definitely a place to start. And I want to cover some miscellaneous stuff about all the platform. One of the things being, they do have a mobile app where you can learn and it is a bit, um, it could use a bit more work, but it does work quite well. And you can actually play that video as a background while doing something else. So it's really good listen, especially for the courses where you don't need to look and kind of need to listen, especially about productivity. You can do that as a podcast type style of, you know, <laughs> uh, learning. So that I think is a really good feature and definitely an advantage over, you know, uh, other platforms there. However, projects, um, there is a sort of a, an area called projects after each course and depends on a teacher. Some teachers actually try to engage you and, and, you know, for you to do some kind of a course at the end of your classes, uh, others do don't, but there is a section for that. And usually you can upload what you learn. For example, um, I learned to uh, create thumbnails with Canva and then I uploaded that thumbnail on project section at that course. And um, to be honest, it it didn't really went anywhere. I got like two likes and uh, I think I got a response from a teacher, which was a bit generic. And overall, after looking at other projects that people uploaded on other classes, it doesn't really seem to work. It's uh, maybe it's more of a motivator for you to actually do something and upload it, but once you upload it, that's it. You know, there is no advantage there of having your course. You, some people may see it, some people may put some likes, but it's not really an engaged community there. However, the feature that I really, really like is the ability to take notes on a video and mark specific on a specific stamp um, time code. So I actually went through one course, which was really good by the YouTuber uh, Ali and he, he, this was amazing. This was literally the best course on that platform out of all the 17 courses I actually tried and out of 10 that I completed, this one was the best. I loved it. I learned so much. It was a three hour course about video editing on Final Cut Pro and I made so many notes there. And then when I actually was editing videos, I was coming back to Skillshare and looking up all of these notes that I wrote in order to apply these things. So I think this was one of the best outcomes that I could have gotten from Skillshare. 
However, I'm a bit disappointed that this was the only course that really stood up there. Not to say other courses were bad, I did enjoy them, I did learn something, and I was, you know, it was quite enjoyable experience, to be honest, to go through the platform and learn something, but only this one class actually exceeded my expectations. And I, I mean, I took that class because I, uh, I'm subscribed to Halley's channel, I love watching his content, and um, I kind of knew, knew him before I subscribed, so I, I kind of was expecting something good, uh, but I've, uh, either way, uh, my expectations were not as high as the content value delivered. So I do actually recommend checking this specific class out because if you want to learn video editing on Final Cut, you know, this is the one to take. So after two months, is it worth getting Skillshare? And <laughs> the answer is mixed because it's not really and yes and no. Uh, let me explain. So out of all 17 courses and 10 courses that I finished, I think it was two or three that really stood out there and actually brought some valuable insights and there was something that I actually learned. So there are definitely courses out there and I do believe that other categories probably also have one or two really, really good courses by really good teachers that you absolutely uh, should take. But the problem is that after you take these courses, the value kind of it depreciates because the more courses than you take, it kind of it, the quality kind of goes down because you already learned, you know, all you needed to learn in that one course. At least that was the experience that I had. So to be honest, the only thing about Skillshare that doesn't make sense is the pricing that they have. Um, they really push you, you know, for to pay for the yearly subscription, but I don't think that's worth it. To be honest, I think it's worth setting those, you know, setting some time. I think they now only offer two weeks of free trial. I think they changed it. Um, not sure you have to check that out. Either way, you definitely have to utilize their free trial. So the, the solution to get the most out of Skillshare is to sign up for a free trial. Before you sign up, you make sure that you're actually gonna learn a lot during those two weeks, you have enough time and so on, so that you can maximize you know, the number of courses you get during that free period. Then, as the only probably gonna offer two weeks, it's not enough to actually go through probably all of the courses you wanna go through which means you should stick to paying monthly instead of yearly. And this is why, because I don't think you need to be on that platform for more than one or two months. For me, two months was definitely enough to get you know 80% of the value that Skillshare offers. I don't think I do need to be there every single month and learn every single month something on there. So I would suggest buying monthly and then after one or two months, canceling it. So mark the date, set the time for classes, pick all classes, start learning, you finish learning, you cancel the Skillshare subscription, and that is amazing deal. Because I think it's, I think it's around like 10 euros or something like that, or $10 per month uh, if you pick up monthly, which is just amazing. Uh, if, if you're taking like five or six uh, classes, you know, you can divide that sum between the classes and it, you know, it comes down to just a couple of do dollars or a couple of euros per class in that one or two months. And that's excluding the free trial. So this is where the real value of Skillshare lies. You go in there, super focused, you do all the classes, you finish them, you cancel and you go out. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. I hope you got the, some value out of this video. If you did enjoy the video, please drop that like down below. It really helps out this really small channel. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao.